Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I've got an update video for you on my wife's 1986 Chevy C30 crew cab dually that she named Johnny Cash. We pulled this truck out of a field where it had set for well over a decade, I'm thinking 12 to 15 years, untouched, unless you were a mouse, that is. It, the thing was an absolute disaster. And I haven't done many videos on it, basically two, I think. One showing it and one showing me setting a 60 LS in it that we got from a 2003 2500 HD. And that's pretty much where we left off. Now, I decided I was not going to do a complete build series videos on this thing and that I would try to keep it compact. And that's what we're doing. So I've got a lot of footage that I want to share with you to get you up to speed, up, up to date on where we're at on the crew cab because it is almost complete. There may be one more video on it, and that's pretty much it, I believe. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy. muscles. It's a bad thing about these is that they're kind of, you know, that's kind of hard to get into a lot of places. But they're awesome and kind of cumbersome as well. Think this is going to work, Lulu? Hmm? Is it going to work? I hope so. So I'm not putting AC on this truck at the moment. Maybe in the future I will. But for right now, it's not, it's a non-AC, non-AC. So I am getting down to the final things as far as big uh, ticket items, as, when the, as far as this retrofit goes. I still got my wiring to terminate and hide. That's a big that's a big thing. Although it's not going to be hard, it's going to be time consuming. I've got that left to do and now I'm working on the core support, which is one of those things that I kind of dreaded in my mind fitting uh, because I'm using the radiator that come out of the donor truck 2003 2500 HD. Um, it's designed to go with this motor, all the hoses and stuff were good, the radiator was good, so I decided to use it to cuz I want to keep down costs. So I don't know exactly how well this shows up, but I drill a hole here with a hole saw, and then there's another one over here. And that's basically the spacing on the two feet that are on the bottom of this radiator. Uh, let me get you turned around here. I'll show you that. And basically this radiator will fit in here, at least at the bottom, uh, pretty much like it did uh, in the factory truck. So you can see on this radiator, it's got two uh, rubber uh, cone type uh, supports or Mounting, mounting positions, and all I did was set this on the core on the core support, center it up, and then marked where these were, and then just hole sawed out. So it'll set down on there just like it just like it did in the original truck. And I decided to go electric fans on this because for one, I already had these fans. These come off of the K10, uh, off the old radiator. So we're just reusing those. And all I did was use zip ties. Actually, you can use zip ties, regular zip ties. You don't have to have them fancy, um, expensive. Uh, you know, fan zip ties, you can you can make them work. So that's what I did. Uh, wired them up. Um, I'm going to be using the trans cooler in this thing and the oil cooler just like it was originally because I've got those lines. Uh, and you can see these hoses, they're designed to fit on that, obviously, because this come off of it. So we don't have to buy hoses. We don't have to buy radiator. I didn't have to buy fans and already had the wire because they reused it out of the donor truck. So none of this cost anything other than my original purchase price. So it's amazing how well that actually fits.
So I'm working on where to mount the computer, the ECM, the controller uh, for this engine. And I don't want to extend the harness. Some people go through the trouble of extending everything, mounting it on the inside. You know, GM mounted these down in the front left, basically down driver's side, or yeah, driver's side front fender down in the bottom. They didn't put them inside the cab. They wasn't worried about getting a little water on them or anything. They're sealed up really good, the connectors and stuff. And if it was good enough for GM, and these things last 300 something thousand miles, well, I, rarely does a ECM die. They do, but rarely. Um, and normally it's not because of water. You get the idea. It's fine for these to be mounted out under the hood. It's not gonna get rained on, and uh, it's not gonna get directly splashed. And I think that's where I'm gonna, I think it's what I'm gonna do. So I'm, I tried to find a spot here that is, a, for one, looks okay. And for two, it clears everything. So I think this is what I'm gonna do, is just mount it right here. Now I did put the fender up here. I checked to make sure the hood bracket and stuff would clear. This stuff's all gonna get wire loomed, so you won't even see that. You'll just see this black box here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I made a little bracket. I've gotta make another one, but for, if it's got to have two points of contact. But you get the idea. That's what I'm gonna do is just buzz that little bracket that I made to the fender well, then I can go about making my other bracket. So just made sure that everything cleared first and I think that's what I'm gonna do after I hydrate because man, it's humid out here. It's like a swamp. So I've been working on this thing nonstop all day and really you can't see anything that I've done. I've been doing what most people would consider as exciting as watching paint dry and that's wiring. Now, whoever pulled the engine out of this truck, we, we bought it without an engine. They just went snip, 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 and cut almost every connector off of the engine harness. Now, luckily I'm doing LS swap and I don't need most of that stuff, but you know, it still makes it a pain when you got to use portions of that harness and you're not you know, the square body man, uh, you know, you have to double check every step you make and check on, you know, uh, look at the wiring schematics and stuff like that. And that's what I've been doing all day. It's boring, horribly boring, but I've made good progress. And I just now hooked a battery up to this thing for the very first time a few minutes ago. And uh, I want to show you the first signs of life that this truck's probably seen in a very, very long time. Now I brought Elizabeth out here and already showed her this. Boom. Yeah, we've got lights, uh, all but tail lights. Typical square body, no tail lights. We've got this this uh, cab light who doesn't want to join the party, but hopefully it's just a bulb. But anyway, when she seen this truck light up for the first time, she smiled. And, uh, you know, that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like what I'm doing is, you know, a value. So, I've got new cab lights, thanks to Deborah and Dimitri. They went on the Amazon wish list and picked up a few things for Elizabeth's truck. And uh, one of those was a set of cab lights. So I'm gonna change these out. They're notoriously bad cab lights on any truck are notoriously bad for leaking, ruining your carpet, rotting out your cab, ruining your headliner, all that stuff. And these, you know, these have, oh wow, look how fragile. These have seen better days. So let's change them out. And uh, then I'm gonna bring Elizabeth out here and show her this thing lit up with new cab lights. So this old truck basically has been in a coma for probably a decade or more. And me hooking up the battery to this thing, I just think in my mind of that, just waking up out of that coma, you know, wondering what the heck's going on. And this thing probably like, what the heck is going on? I have sure went downhill in the last, uh, 10 years, but at least somebody is trying to bring me back to life. And uh, I think that's kind of funny to think about. These old gaskets and stuff, they just get hard and then water leaks around them, gets down inside the cab and just smokes them. Is that, how is that in there? Is that just stuck in there?
I am sweating. It is humid, very humid. Are you ready to see them? Yeah. I am as well. They all light up? Yep. Oh man, that does look good, don't it? They're all working. Mm -hmm. Man, it's, unfortunately yeah. the light in front of the shop's on, but <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Looks real good. So I'm working on my transmission cooler. This is the actual condenser fan. And because I'm not running AC on this truck right now, I've uh, decided to use this condenser fan and uh, use it to push air through my trans cooler. I've got a big trans cooler here that was, it was on the motorhome that this, the transmission that's in this truck come out of, really big, nice cooler. And because I'm not running AC, I just stuck the trans cooler behind the uh, original fan. Now what I could do is put an inline temperature sensor transmission gets above a certain temperature it turns on this fan and blows air through the cooler you know it's it's an option uh, but for now there's no ac on it so and that was a good place for the cooler plus the fans here so i just decided to to do that so i'm running teflon line i'm running teflon line as far as the fuel line it's good for methanol not that we're going to be running methanol in this but Teflon's just great. It holds up well. It lasts forever. So that's what I decided to get. Teflon line, both for my trans cooler, fuel line. Now on the other truck I used, I believe this is HDPE. Not for sure. It's a little bit cheaper. A lot more flexible line than the, uh, than the Teflon stuff. Smaller in diameter the Teflon is than the, uh, I believe, let's just say HDPE. It's just rubber line. A little bit smaller in diameter same id so a little more expensive hose but this teflon but it definitely will hold up hold up a lot longer now the fittings they also take different fittings you can see they're two different size lines so uh, these take a fitting that is quite a bit harder a ferruled fitting that's quite a bit harder to put on this is tougher to mess with than this stuff here so to cut this teflon line what i do is just use a little cutoff a cutoff wheel just on the angle grinder and all i do is cut just through the wires and not through the teflon if you're a ninja with a cutoff wheel you can do that and uh, then once i'm through all the wires uh, i just take my knife and slice through it so i don't get any debris inside the line you don't have to be a ninja actually cutoff wheel doesn't cut teflon very well it kind of slides on top of it so get the idea it's not hard here, Cora, hold that line. I just gotta flare out this uh, stainless braid a bit so I can get my ferrule on. So that looks pretty good. i take and put my ferrule on and make sure that it slides all the way up on there and butts up. this in and then tighten this down and it kind of crushes that ferrule in on the tubing they make special wrenches for these like if you care a lot and you don't want to scratch them they're just aluminum wrenches I don't necessarily care if I scratch these or not so that's on there and shouldn't come off now hook that up Cora please since you're on the creeper uh, it's got a little latch see that little spring latch yeah it goes in and then twists and locks against that little lever no you gotta flip it over yep turn it back the other way there, now push it in and twist. There you go. Thank you.
looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. So I'm working on all of the wires that go from the computer, the ECM, into the truck. Now these wires are a serial two or a class two serial data port, which is your OBD2, which you plug in to check for codes. Let's say your check engine light comes on, you want to see why it come on. Well, you plug into that port, one of these wires goes to that. One of these wires goes to the check engine light, and all it does is supply ground to a to a little light and turn it on and then you know that you've got a code inside of your ECM and you need to plug into the OBD2 to check it. Also we've got vehicle speed sensor, we've got uh, our uh, cruise control, brake switch, a few little wires here that got to go from the ECM inside so I can communicate with this computer from the inside of the truck. Speedometer, all that stuff right here. So this is patches the temporary shop kitty. Actually, somebody dropped this little cute little calico kitten, dropped it off. People are, people are bad sometimes. So she was really little hungry. We've had her for a couple weeks now. Um, so we decided, you know, we'd feed her, we'd try to find her home, and we did. We got lucky, found a good family that has a young daughter that wanted a cat. So this is just staying here for temporary but she is so sweet if elizabeth wasn't allergic to cats we may have another cat around but or not another but a cat around so kit or uh patches is just temporary the little girl's already named it patches by the way the little girl that's going to be this little kitty's owner or caretaker whatever you want to call it oh, oh ow ow little kitty That nut circle set. It should. All right, so that is mounted. These things are super easy to modify and just adapt to any you know, automotive thing that you're using or whatever project. Doesn't have to be automotive. Nice little tanks. Really appreciate uh, Sebastian and Demetrius sending me that. This is the air filter, obviously. It just kind of sticks up on here and then you clamp her down. So. Good enough. Nothing hits. All is well. Now all I gotta do is plumb in that little uh, windshield washer motor into the windshield washer system and I'll have a operating windshield washer on a 1985 model truck, which is unheard of. So I'm doing a quick job on Elizabeth's truck, Johnny Cash. What I'm doing is replacing the mat brake master cylinder. That truck had sat in the field for a decade or more and the bore in the master cylinder is part of the brake system. It was all chewed up. I tried to pull the original one apart, clean it all up, but it was, just, it was just a waste of time. It was too destroyed by corrosion. So I've got a new master cylinder here, and I just super quick want to show you the process of bench bleeding this thing because I think it is the best way to install one of these. Uh, we're going to bench bleed it real quick, and we're going to stick it on her truck and see if it now has brakes.
So what I've done is made up a couple of pieces of brake line here. You can use rubber line or anything you can get to go in the outlets and seal. Because what we're trying to do is keep from wasting a bunch of brake fluid and keep from pumping air back into the system as we're trying to bleed this. So what I'm going to do is tighten these two down and then I'm just going to bend, bend these by hand just over and down to the bottom of the reservoir. Then I'm going to fill it with fluid and then we will pump this until we get nothing, no air bubbling out of these lines. So I'm going to grab a couple of inches, tighten these down. We'll fill this up with fluid and we'll bleed this thing. Alright, so I'm just gonna push this, try to push this in by hand. See the fluid level go down a little bit and air come out and it's just filling up the cylinder that's below the reservoir here. And I think we've just about got it. pretty much it. Bench bled. That just save you from pumping a bunch of air into your brake lines. Now you can take this whole unit, put it on the truck, just un car whatever, undo your lines, hook them up super quick, then you should have very little air in your lines. So the front end of this truck is all together. I've got all the wiring done and I want to show you the engine compartment and uh, we'll quickly touch on the wiring, which is most people's least favorite part. Quickly, we'll touch on that and we'll fire this thing up, you know, show you how it runs. So there are hundreds, if not thousands of videos online uh, showing uh, LS installs. So I didn't want to go into super detail uh, installing this. I basically showed myself setting this engine in and that is pretty much where we left off. But I have got this thing finished. The install is 99% done and I want to just touch on a few of the most important things that I learned during this install really quickly uh, in a, an attempt to save a lot of you guys that may want to go down the same, same road as me a lot of time or a lot of money or both potentially. So the first thing that I'm glad that I did on this install, and you can see, basically I used all the factory components that came out of the donor truck that this engine uh, came out of. I used the uh, factory overflow tank, I used the factory radiator, I used the factory radiator hoses. Uh, the only thing that I did not use factory is the air box, and the only reason I didn't use that is because it was broken, but the original air box goes over where this battery sits, so it would have took me swapping the battery to this side. But you get the idea bought the cheapest available cold air intake that is actually hot air intake uh, off of Amazon and stuck it on here uh, just to you know get some sort of air breather on this thing. Also, I used the factory wiring harness that came with this thing. For one, the factory wiring harness, it's hard to beat the quality of the factory harness. All the connectors and stuff easily, you know, without abuse or uh, rodent uh, damage will last a few hundred thousand miles. I used it and I went through the effort to thin it down to make it a standalone harness. Now you can buy, you can push the easy button, you know, buy it now button and buy a standalone harness that has already been rewired. But by doing that, 
you can spend anywhere from two to a thousand bucks depending on the harness that you buy and you also lose out on all of the information the chances are the people that either buy uh, aftermarket harness they're either just trying to do it quick and they already know all the information or they're scared of the thought of all of these wires and getting into it and they just want to push the easy button buy one that's already done and skip that i highly suggest that you do not buy a aftermarket harness and that you put the effort in that it takes to rewire that factory harness on on your own make it a standalone harness for one it only takes a couple hours and if i can do it you can do it chances are and you learn so much about the workings of a vehicle you get all your wires are labeled if you have trouble in the future you have already went through the harness and you know a ton more than what you would had you bought a aftermarket or standalone wiring harness so rework your factory harness relume it make it pretty whatever you want to do gain that information and save that money another let me get you over on the other side i'll show you another huge thing that saved me a ton of money so the other large thing that I did is I stuck with the factory ECU. Now you can spend anywhere from I think fifteen to two thousand dollars or more on a aftermarket ECU. But if you plan to keep your engine in factory form, the factory ECU is far more than capable of running the engine. In fact, it was designed to run this engine. And my eyelids are sweating. It's so hot out here. Uh, Stick with the factory ECU if you're going to stick with the engine in a factory form. I did not change anything on this engine other than I put a set of red ignition coils on it because the factory ones were so rotted that I was afraid that they were just going to give out, uh, you know, not long after I got this engine in there. So I bought a set of those, like I mentioned, cold air intake, and that is it. Other than that, this engine is in complete factory form. I also left the uh, mass airflow uh, in my ECU because these engines just seem to run better with a mass airflow controller on them. So I left that in. I'm glad that I did it that way. I did have to send this off. A viewer of uh, the channel, his name's Disney, he uh, deleted the VATS, the vehicle anti-theft system that is installed on the factory ECU. That has to be done. Cost you anywhere from $100 to $200 to probably get that done. But that's a far smaller number than $2,000 plus like I say, if you're going to stick with a relatively factory engine, this is more than capable of doing all of the things that you need to do. So that was a huge win sticking with this. I'm so glad I didn't you know, go the aftermarket route on both the wiring harness and the ECU. So one more thing that I it, actually I've mentioned this previously and that benefited me greatly was buying the entire parts vehicle. I know that's not an option for a lot of people who have limited space, but if you can, it will save you a thousand trips to the parts store for wire or a piece of brake line or, in my case, a hydro boost cylinder, which for some reason still fits from 2003 to 1986, with a very few modifications, that is. But, you know, that's a big deal. All of those parts and pieces, um, Stuff that you would not have got had you bought your engine off of a pallet on space space. So, you know, just wanted to mention that. I stripped the wiring harness out of that truck, got just rolls of wire that are like new, basically, uh, that uh, I used to run the fuel pump, uh, that I used to run wires inside to all the switches and stuff that I've installed. It was to lengthen wiring harness, you name it. All of that stuff came from that parts vehicle and was well worth the cost of storing it for a little bit to, you know fuel tank fuel pump you name it all that stuff in a parts vehicle that you wouldn't get otherwise so if you got the option do that so this is a completely cold start even though it's like 90 something degrees out here it hasn't been started today let's say <laughs> So this thing runs pretty good. Now, I've only got the exhaust ran to the mufflers and no tailpipes after that. So it's a little louder than what it'll be normally, but look how smooth that thing runs. Let's take a ride in it. Pretty 
concerned about this truck, about the transmission in this truck. We bought it used, but luckily it seems to be okay. And I don't know why the seat just keeps on. So it's in the right spot. That it's close keeps to on skating forward. <laughs> So as far as the inside of this truck goes, not a lot has changed other than my brother Ricky and I installed a brand new headliner in this thing. My brother Rick is a custom upholstery guy, so we kind of got the hookup on upholstery, but none of it is quite is done yet. We did install a new dash because for these they're cheap. Uh, Elizabeth dynamated or soundproofed the entire thing. A viewer actually brought us a couple boxes of this soundproofing, which is very nice. I really love the way that it Quiet, quieted down the uh, original brown truck that uh, built. So we decided to do it to this one as well. As far as seats go, I mean, it looks pretty rough right now, but uh, me and my brother Rick uh, and my wife Elizabeth all sat down and we came up with a custom design that uh, me and Elizabeth both liked. And we are gonna be building uh, these seat covers. So we're gonna strip off the old cover and actually use the old one as a pattern to fabricate something kind of custom that Elizabeth and, and I uh, like. So that's all coming and also new carpet. We also got installed door panels, door cards. Interior's not done, but it came a long way, I guess, but still, long way to go still. So there's that brand new dash, looking pretty good. And you can see the new headliner, at least some of it anyway. Kind of dark, but you get the idea. Turned out really nice. And all the dyed interior panels. Just got to get the rest of it done. So let's touch on the outside of this truck. And obviously, me and Elizabeth put a large set of 22-inch uh, big truck wheels on this thing in order to give it a more custom look. And, and we love the way that it looks. It's kind of like a pair of shoes. Yeah, you either like them or you don't. So we like them. We think it looks really good. And what we're going to do to 
make it a little more custom is we are going to lower this truck. Now, originally I was thinking a 6.8 drop, but I've decided against that. I do not want to take away from the tow capacity of this truck, at least not as much as what something like that would. And I've decided to just do a, a set of three inch drop spindles in the front and a three or four inch drop in the back, just to try to give this thing a good stance. A little bit lower than what it is, maybe cut that distance in half uh, between the top of the tire and the fender well. And then really the look of this truck is pretty much done other than I've got a set of fenders that are in a little bit better shape than these and I'm going to try to get those to match to the original patina of this truck and that is pretty much it other than maybe a painted rear bumper that my dad has had in his barn for over I don't know, two decades that's not being used that will replace the chrome rusty one on the back. Let me show you the tailgate on this thing. I think you'll find what I did to it uh, kind of interesting. So looking at this tailgate, you would not know it's actually two tailgates into one. The original tailgate that was on this truck was completely caved in up here at the top and had Bondo in it about a half inch thick. From this body line up, it was just ruined. So what I did is I took the old tailgate from my brown truck in the shop, the one that I rebuilt years ago, I cut the top off of it because it was in relatively decent shape and I scabbed it on to the original tailgate that came with this truck because it was not rusty in the bottom. My original tailgate off the brown truck was rotted out in the bottom and this truck was beat up in the top. So I just put this top on this tailgate, welded it right along this seam here. I'll bring you in and show you that. There's no body filler or anything in it. It's just welded across the, that body line right there. And then I'll show you on the back side where it's welded. So I don't know if you can see that or not, probably not. I tried to do a pretty uh, good job of putting the top of this on, but it's got a weld seam all the way along this body line here. There's no body filler or anything in this. This is just the way it come from after welding. And uh, it, it really turned out great. And this is just spray paint up here. So I took two tailgates and, uh, and made one. I'd much rather have a factory tailgate than any one of those aftermarket ones that are kind of thin and flimsy. Uh, this is a lot better metal to work with. So took two tailgates and made one. So there's a look at the two bad pieces. This is the old tailgate off the brown truck. Uh, you can see it's, it's rotted out in the hinge area. The bottom of this tailgate's no good, but at the top it was. And this is the top off of the black truck, off of Johnny Cash. So I just cut it off right at that body line removed the top off this one and welded it on the other one and it turned out it turned out awesome. It was actually a really easy job to do. So, like I say, I'd res much rather have a factory tailgate, the thick metal than one of them aftermarket ones. So, spent a few hours doing that. It was worth it. So there you go. There's an update on Johnny Cash, the 1986 C30 crew cab dually that sat in a field for I don't know, 12 to 15 years. It was an absolute disaster when we got it. And over the last few months, I've put in as much time as I can on it. I'd be done with it by now if I didn't have so much other things going on. But I have been pushing pretty hard on it simply because do your family things and, and kids needing cars and all that. We need this thing on the road. And me and Elizabeth, we really want to get out and enjoy this thing you know, while we can. So there you go, a little bit of polishing buffing on that old paint, a little bit of shining here and there, and it's going to be a really nice truck. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.